Um, so, you know, first understanding what the medial branches innervate. Um, you guys are probably familiar with this, but they, they innervate the facet joints, the multifidious muscles, the interspinal muscles, um, and some ligaments, as well as a patch of skin over the, the joint, um, which is important because that's one of the side effects of the procedure. Um, there, there are some papers that suggest by doing the RFAs at a certain level repeatedly over time can, can atrophy some of these smaller muscles and destabilize the spine a bit, cause pain as well. Um, to keep in mind. So the, the medial branch in the lumbar spine crosses over the root of the transverse process of the vertebral body below. So at the L4-5 facet joint, they're innervated by the L3 and L4 medial branch. It would not be the L4 and L5 medial branch. So you'll see in this picture here, um, the ventral ramus of L2 comes up here, gives off a branch, and comes right through the root of the transverse process snugly against the superior articular process here. It's, it's more snugly up against the lateral wall of the superior articular process than on the transverse process. So when you're placing your needle, you really want to make sure you're snug up against that, that uh, bone there. The red line here is the mammalo accessory ligament. Um, it becomes important in, in getting your trajectory view because you want to caudally tilt and obliquely tilt to avoid that ligament. If you end up with your needle on top of that ligament, you'll, you'll not be burning the nerve. You won't get the effect you want. So the indications, um, failed conservative care for three months. I, I wanted to point this out quick because that 80% relief of pain from two controlled blocks of different length of action. I think one of the, the things I see with patients is that they don't quite understand the, what pain you're trying to alleviate with this procedure. Many of them may have spinal stenosis, um, myofascial pain in places. So you really want to make sure they understand that the pain you're attempting to improve so you can get good benefit from your blocks and, and have them qualify for the ablation. So acquiring uh, the target, you wanna first go oblique, about 25 degrees. You can see over here in the picture on the left, the Scotty dog starts becoming um, apparent. And you'll see uh, the picture on the right is showing the needle trajectory, again, right up against the superior articular process and that sulcus on the lateral margin. You wanna decline caudally about 25 degrees as well, um, which is this middle picture here to avoid the mammal accessory ligament and to give you a nice trajectory so you can be parallel along that nerve, which is important for the, the burn, which you saw a little bit earlier when they were uh, showing the burn of the chicken, how it's a nice oval burn. I have a picture of that coming up in a bit. Um, at L5, S1, so it's the L5 primary dorsal ramus. Again, it targets right at that uh, lateral border and the sulcus of the superior articular process um, coming up from, from S1. This is the probe, so um, trying to get parallel to the nerve, like I just mentioned, by being parallel to the nerve, you get a lot larger surface area burn along the nerve, which gives you a longer relief of your procedure, as opposed to if you don't quite uh, oblique cartily enough to avoid that ligament, you come in more perpendicular to it, the surface area burn is much smaller and potentially relief for a shorter period of time. After you go in that oblique caudal view and get your needle right up in the position, you wanna go to a safety view, which is a lateral view. And you want to make sure your, your needle's not going into the neural frame and anteriorly. So you want to be in about the, the central two-fourths of the superior articular process. You can see the picture on the left here. It's not quite there. The one on the right here is closer approaching. But you can see very clearly here, you want to leave a little space um, between the uh, tip of the needle and that superior articular process edge where the neural frame it is. Um, once you're there, you, put in, you can do your sensory check, motor checks, make sure they're not having symptoms down the leg not having twitching in the muscles down the leg. Um, and you want to make sure they're not too sedated when you get to that point so they can active, you know, accurately um, inform you of, of what they're feeling and sensing. And then you put a little bit of anesthetic down on the nerve to um, help with pain and you start the burn. I believe, you know, many people have different techniques and how many burns they do. I typically do a burn, pull back a little bit and do another burn. Some people rotate the needle. Um, some people may even readjust. Theoretically, if you readjust the needle, you want to recheck your views and potentially even do checking again, uh, depending on where you readjust it to. So this is suboptimal position. We, we spoke about it a little bit on the earlier slide. You can see this bottom one is, is too close to the neural frame in here. Top is not quite uh, in position yet. Over here on the right, it's not up against that's I mean, on the left, sorry. It's not up against that superior articular process. On the lateral margin, it's more over the transverse process. and. And this one down here is kind of floating out in space. It's not really anywhere where it needs to be. Going up to the cervical medial branch anatomy, there's a lot more variation in these branches. 
um, at C5, uh, which is here, the, the nerve tends to go right over the middle section of the lateral mass. As you go both superiorly and inferiorly along the cervical column, the nerve uh, trajectory starts climbing a little more superior. When you're down at C7, it's, it's at the very uh, upper aspect of that superior articular process. In the cervical spine, the medial branches are the actual joint. So C4, 5 facet joint is C4, 4, 5 medial branch. Same indications um, that we kind of spoke about. Target acquisition, so patient's prone. There's two um, passes that are, are mostly described, sagittal pass and an oblique pass. Um, you get an, obtain a true AP view, square off your end plates, um, and you want to tilt the C-arm caudally about five degrees so you can see that lateral groove and the lateral mass and aim right at the center of that lateral mass. Oblique pass is very similar, but you take more of a 30 degree uh, oblique towards the side to head towards the lateral groove waist, which you'll see in the picture here. So this is an oblique view. Um, you can see that C5, again, the nerves right in the middle of that lateral mass. You can see the needle is right at the center part, portion there. In the cervical spine, the, the nerve tends not to hug up against the bone as it does in the lumbar spine. It tends to be about a millimeter off of the bone. So you have a little room um, from the bone out that you want to be. The one on the left here is at C5, but it's, it's a little bit high. It's not quite at the center there. Once you um, do your target and you get down to where you think you want to be, there are other views you could take. You can go back to an AP. You'll definitely want to check a lateral. Some people do a contralateral oblique to really make sure they're posterior and not in the neuroforamen. So here's the lateral view. You want to be in the, the anterior third of the lateral mass here. Again, avoiding the neuroforamen. You'll see coming up in a foramen oblique view, a lot of people like to use to be sure it becomes very clear um, that you're on the lateral mass and you're not into that neuroforamen yet. More optimal views here. So again, needle going right at the lateral mass, right in the center por portion. Foramen oblique view. Again, needles are outside the neuroforamen, clear. Uh, complications from it, so in cervical spine, there's more risk of vasovagal. Um, for both of them, you get neuritis, numbness in the cutaneous area that we discussed. Um, and then for the third occipital nerve, which we kind of glanced over, I can go back in a bit and show you. Um, main side effects are ataxia, so some people get very cautious doing bilateral, and some will only do unilateral sides. Third occipital nerve, which uh, I missed trying to get you guys to happy hour, goes right across that C2-3 th joint. So you want to place your needle right along that joint line at C2-3. C We'll be doing this in the lab tomorrow, so we can talk a little more in depth then also. Any, any questions? Did I go too fast? Are you happy I went fast? <laughs> yeah. All right.